Well, good afternoon. Uh, thank you all for being here. My name is Mike McGuire, and I'm honored to represent uh, a third of the California coastline from the great North Coast. Uh, I'm a representative in the State Senate. Uh, we are grateful that we have several environmental small business leaders here as well, along with representatives uh, representing uh, California's great men and women from the California fishing fleet. Uh, I'm grateful that we have Regina Shikazola, who is a salmon water policy analyst for the Pacific Coast Federation of Fishermen. We have uh, Sammy Jinsa here, who is a co commercial fisherman out of Del Norte County. We're grateful to be able to have Ashley Blaco here. She's with Oceana, and she's the Pacific Policy and Communications Manager. And then we'll also be hearing from Catherine Phillips, the director of Sierra Club California. Uh, and before I get into some very brief remarks, I want to say thank you uh, to Catherine, along with Ashley, uh, and all the organizers of today's event, where hundreds have descended uh, on today's forum. And on behalf of all of us, we want to welcome you uh, to President Trump's sham public hearing. Um, in just a few moments, uh, President Trump uh, and his team will officially kick off the giveaway of California's beloved coast to big oil. Uh, we're grateful that all of you are here uh, in one of California's great coastal cities, the great city of Sacramento. Uh, and I say that sarcastically uh, because President Trump uh, and those who are working with him to sell out our coast have not held and will not hold one hearing in one coastal city throughout this process. President Trump has hooked his wagon. He's hooked his wagon to the dinosaurs of American industry, coal and oil. And he is hell-bent on turning the Golden State into a dark, oozy brown. And he's literally the only leader on the planet that has refused to join the Paris Accords. This makes California's mission more important than ever. When Washington, D.C. denied climate change exists, California passed the strongest climate law in the nation. 50% of our energy will come from green, renewable sources by 2030. California has the strongest, has the strongest clean air and water laws in the country. And we lead America in new job growth when it comes to our new energy economy. That said, we have a hell of a fight in front of us. And let me tell you, California has won this fight before, and we're going to win it again this year to be able to stop President Trump's giveaway to big oil. A recent poll found that 90 percent, 90 percent of Californians believe that protecting the coastline is an important priority. A 2017 survey from PPIC said that support for offshore oil drilling here in California is at an all-time low of just 25% of residents. We are going to submit 1,500, 1,500 letters that have been collected from residents throughout the North Coast between the Golden Gate Bridge and the Oregon border. These 1,500 letters here today represent strong opposition to President Trump's giveaway to big oil. In addition, the state Senate passed a bipartisan resolution supported by Republicans and Democrats earlier this week that puts the California state Senate squarely on record opposing this giveaway to big oil. Finally, as I'm sure you saw, legislation and administrative moves are happening right now to be able to block President Trump's reckless plan to open up our coast to big oil. Number one, we will ensure that any oil that is uh, from comes from the ground and federal waters cannot be refined here in the state of California. Number two, we will prohibit all loading of oil from Trump's oil rigs. And number three, we will refuse. We will refuse to have uh, any of that oil offloaded on California shores. And we will also deny uh, any construction of new pipelines on California soil. Without further ado, uh, it is now my honor to be able to introduce Regina Shikazola. She's a salmon and water policy analyst from the Pacific Coast Federation of Fishermen Association. I'll then bring up Sammy here in just a bit, but this is going to have a significant impact if President Trump gets his way on our $7 billion commercial fishing industry and $2 billion recreational fishing industry. Regina. Regina and her son, who has been amazing today, by the way. Hello, and um, thank you for being here today to stay, say no to offshore oil drilling in the state of California. Um, my name is Regina Chikazola, and this is my son, Malcolm Fisher Chikazola. Um, and this is what it's all about, is making sure the next generation actually sees what it means to be able to have salmon runs and to have fish in the ocean and be able to go fishing. 
Um, say hi. Hi. Um, Salmon has actually testified for the oceans in many places. But um, I'm here today representing the commercial fishing fleet, and I think we've seen everywhere where there is oil does not mix with water. And our commercial fisher, fishing fleet is a, a multi-billion dollar industry in California. And everywhere that we have seen oil drilling within an important area for commercial fisheries where there's been an oil spill, we have seen the economy be hit very hard. Um, the Heron runs haven't even come back to the Prince William Sound to this day. I was there 15 years after the oil spill and there's still oil all over the Prince William Sound. Um, as, we saw, as we saw from the BP oil spill, um, still the fishermen are not out there working. The crab are not filling out. Um, people are really suffering and it's not just the it's not just the tourism industry, but it's the fishing fleet. And right now we're seeing back-to-back -back disasters with the fishing fleet already in California because of poor water management. Our salmon fishery is closed down a lot of the time. Last week, we were two weeks ago, we were here because of the Trump administration is also trying to get more water diversions from our rivers. And then in our oceans, we are seeing the crab fishery shut down a lot because of the impacts of climate change and global warming. So the crab fishing seasons are getting shorter, the salmon fishery is not coming back, and Trump is proposing an all-out war on our oceans and our rivers. And so um, fishermen are here to say that we will not stand for that, and we will fight back, and our children will fight back too. So um, thank you all for coming so much, and um, I'm very proud also to um, I'm also proud to also announce, um, to <laughs> and I'm proud to also um, introduce Sammy Gensaw, who is a Yurok traditional fisherman here that came here with me today, and he is going to speak next. Thank you. Ayukui. I come from the village of Rekwa, which is the mouth of Delaware County's river, the Klamath. And I'd like to talk to you today about a proposed national oil and gas program, which includes the creation of seven new offshore oil leases along the Pacific coast. And I also want to tell you that the Yurok tribe and the indigenous people of California have been protecting this coastline for thousands of years. And we plan to continue to protect this coastline. And we will stand hand in hand, not only with indigenous people, but all the people of California. Because today, I'm not in front of you just as an indigenous man of California. I'm in front of you as a commercial fisherman who depends on a healthy river and a healthy ecosystem to take care of my family. I am an American man. And my family, an American family, is being killed by low water flow, by these federal plans which plan to extract water and kill our oceans so our people can no longer survive. Well today I say this is no longer a message of peace but today I call upon all American people to come and protect our natural resources not just for indigenous people but for Americans everywhere. Well, thank you. You know, again, uh, California's commercial fishing industry represents seven billion dollars in revenue for our state e economy. Our recreational fishing industry is two billion in revenue. And what we know and what we just heard from Sammy is that it has been hit incredibly hard by demoic acid over the past two years. This will kill California's fishing industry if Trump's giveaway to big oil is allowed to continue. We are next going to hear from Ashley Blako. She is with Oceana. She's the Pacific Policy and Communications Manager. We're grateful for all of her work and her fantastic advocacy. Good afternoon. By the presence and voices of hundreds of people today on a weekday, nonetheless, and thousands of Californians who turned out last Saturday in a statewide solidarity of coastal rallies, we have made it abundantly clear that California's coastline is not for sale. We haven't seen new offshore oil drilling leases beyond three miles of the Golden State since 1984 for a reason. We've all seen the devastation that offshore drilling and chronic spills from those activities have caused over the decades, from the loss of human life to severe economic impacts to families and cities from beach closures, campground closures, and fishery closures, as well as the severe impacts to wildlife from being oiled by this toxic substance. 
We're reliant on healthy, clean, and diverse oceans that support thousands of jobs and generate millions of dollars through fisheries, tourism, and recreation alone in the Golden State. The 1969 and the 2015 Refugio Beach oil spill together affected more than 900 miles of ocean. That's nearly twice the city of Los Angeles. The risk of more offshore drilling means the risk of more offshore spilling, and that's simply something that California cannot afford. I encourage everyone who's here today and everyone who's listening to either go on to regulations.gov to submit comments, or you can text OCEANS to 52886 and send your comments to Secretary Zinke and let him know that our oceans are not for sale. I'd also like to thank Senator McGuire and the other legislative members here who are working really hard in the Capitol to thwart, to thwart these efforts to prevent the expansion of offshore oil and gas drilling. Thank you. I think it's important to note 500,000 jobs are dependent on a clean coast here in California every year. Our coastal economy is worth over $40 billion. This is why so many are here in Sacramento today to be able to fight back, speak out loud and proud to make sure that we're able to protect our coast. And speaking of being loud and proud, we are so grateful that Maura Sullivan is here today. She is with the uh, Chumash Band of uh, Coastal, excuse me, the Coastal Band of uh, Chumash Nation. I do apologize, Ms. Sullivan, uh, representing the native people here of California. She's from Ventura County, and she is going to be talking to us about why it is so important for both our environment and our economy to better protect our coast. Ms. Sullivan, we're grateful that you're here. Thank you so much. Haku, haku, kuhku, kakti mola Sullivan, kapani shumolok, metskanakan hello. I come from Santa Barbara and Ventura counties where we just suffered one of the worst wildfires and mudslides in California history um, as signs of climate change. So that was after a huge drought. That's all connected. It's all connected. Um, I grew up in the ocean. My father's a fisherman. I am now myself taking on fishing and traditional fishing. And I look forward to a day when I do not have to see oil rigs on my horizon because it's a, it's a way of life now. And I look forward to a day when not only are we stopping more creation, but when I don't have to see oil rigs on my horizon. And, um, you know, it, it's been a great opportunity to come here, um, meet other Native people, um, and have solidarity with them, and be on the same page, and to look across, and, and to be able to say, no, this isn't happening on our watch, because, um, you know, like my friends were saying, we do this for the future generations. We do this for, for who, those who are coming. So, um, and for me personally, um, I was there during the refugio spill. I wasn't born in 69, but I've always heard about that oil spill. And, um, you know, Santa Barbara, Ventura, my coastline, where I'm from, um, we don't have control over those resources. And it's no surprise that California Indian people, we do not have control over our own coastline. And that is a historic trauma that is part of taking away control of who we are. And um, it's, it's our obligation to protect the coast. I absolutely oppose these oil rigs. Um, these people don't even live here. These people will not even be affected by these oil spills because they will spill. And there's no, there's, there's no going back after that. So thank you, I appreciate being here. Thank you, Ms. Sullivan. I think it's important to note that the Smithsonian has done some research and only an estimated 25% of the oil was recovered after the BP Deepwater Horizon disaster in 2010. And a measly 14% of the oil from the Exxon Valdez spill back in 1989 was recovered. And one of the leading advocates to be able to stop offshore oil drilling not just in California, but throughout this nation and the world, is Sierra Club. And we are so grateful that Catherine Phillips, the California director of the Sierra Club, is here today. I want to personally thank her for her advocacy. She's been working night and day to ensure that we don't do a giveaway to President Trump and his buddies in big oil. Ms. Phillips. <laughs> thank you, Senator McGuire. Um, one of the things that I do remember is uh, what happened in 1969. Um, I was alive then, and I can tell you that it was uh, devastating to Californians everywhere, not just those who lived in Santa Barbara. 
that's when a giant oil spill essentially began the modern environmental movement. Um, and it's since then uh, that um, Californians and Americans everywhere have realized that the, the key to clean air, the key to fighting climate change, the key to having a, a, a vibrant marine environment is to stop drilling oil. We've got to keep it in the ground. We know it's a key element of climate change. Around the world, uh, countries, cities, regions are taking steps to reduce, their, uh, to reduce their use of oil in the transportation sector. We're seeing more uh, electric vehicles, zero emission buses. Everyone recognizes that we have to do something to get off of oil. And the first step to getting off of oil is to not build new drilling sites off the coast. We have to stop drilling oil. We have to stop using it to the extent we are. And we have to somehow get that message through to an administration that is, is led by somebody who's still living in pre-1969. I think we must have been watching different television stations back in 1969 because I remember what oil will do. He doesn't. But I want you to know that we know because we have members all over the country who are going to similar meetings and similar rallies that are, are working to stop this man's efforts to drill oil all over the country and off the coast. We're all there, we're united, and we're united with people all over the world in this effort. So thank you. Thank you so much. We're gonna open it up for questions uh, here in just one moment. I just, uh, Sammy wanted to be able to say just a few moments about uh, how terrible a spill would be, particularly on the commercial fishing industry of California because of the challenge that we've had. And I, I came here to be strong. I came here to be strong for my people and everything we represent. And we cannot find that strength without truth. So I'm going to be completely honest to you, with you today. And that is the life of the American fisherman is being killed. The way of our fishermen is being stomped on by these federal laws, by these, by these actions. And I want to say that these American families can no longer pay their bills. They can no longer afford to give their kids the resources they need to live healthy lives. And that's because they want to drill for oil off our coast. These, and why attack the American fishermen at the, one of our worst times? When we are striving to come together and find ways to take care of our families, now we have to open up the newspaper and see that Trump wants to take away one of our only ways of life that we have left. Our relationship with the ocean is one of the strongest relationships we have left. The land has been taken. We can no longer work the lands that we used to to provide for our families. The ocean is all we have left in a lot of ways. And when you push us our backs against the ocean, we will not just fall off, we will not just die off. We will get in those boats and we will fight because that's what we do as Americans. That's what we do as people who fight for freedom. We will come together, we will feed our families. We will take responsibility as fishermen to not only make sure that these resources are here for our grandchildren, but to make sure that these resources are here for future generations to come. So I do, I strongly support supporting our fishermen. And I ask you to do the same. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sammy. We'd like to be able to open it up for any questions, please. Yes. Um, from 2012 You're just going to speak loud and proud. I'm sorry, sir. So the, it's been very clear that we have not granted in, in more than three decades 
a new offshore oil rig uh, permission here in the state of California. And what the legislature has already said is that we are going to stand strong and we believe that we're going to be able to get legislation passed that will uh, stop any new offshore oil drilling in federal waters. Uh, that's three miles out. Um, so the other piece is this, the State Lands Commission came out with a public statement yesterday. Uh, and because of the unpopularity of offshore oil drilling in this state, the State Lands Commission, who uh, governs all undersea tidal lands for the state of California, said that they will not allow any use of existing pipelines to transport oil from new leases offshore. So that will essentially shut down uh, any potential expansion that you were just talking about. Uh, state waters and they're going to have to be able to uh, put a, a pipeline in federal waters to be able to connect to the shore. We will not grant those leases. Um, so that could either be done administratively uh, as well as legislatively and both tracks are moving forward at this time. Next question, please. Any additional questions? Please. I think that President Trump has been very clear in his mission to be able to open up any track of land, any part of ocean, to be able to go after fossil fuels. So I believe it is a parallel attack that President Trump is moving forward with, both in the Arctic refuge, here in the Pacific, as well as the East Coast. So uh, it, some may say that. I don't believe it. I think that he is serious about both, to be able to drill in our oceans and to be able to kill off endangered species in salmon in the Arctic Refuge. Uh, so that is why here in the state of California, we're simply not gonna allow it. And I also wanna point out that we have Republican governors in this country, the Republican governor of Massachusetts, the Republican governor of Florida, the Republican governor of South Carolina, who have all come out opposed to not offshore oil drilling off of their states. This is a bipartisan issue. But what I will tell you is that California is going to continue to lead the way. We're going to lead the way to be able to combat climate change, to be able to adopt new policies when it comes to green renewable resources, and to be able to stop Donald Trump's giveaway to big oil. Any, um, any other, please. It's a great question. Uh, the question was, is if uh, the state of Florida, home of Mar-a-Lago Resort, can be exempted, uh, why can't California? Um, and candidly, and I'll give you my own editorial, uh, Governor Rick Scott, a Republican, uh, asked for an exemption off of their coast in the state of Florida. Uh, Mr. Zinke uh, granted that. Now, our understanding is that the president is having second thoughts about that exemption that was granted by the uh, Interior Secretary. That said, uh, you better believe that we're going to ask for uh, equality in those decisions. If Florida gets to be able to ban new offshore oil drilling, you better believe it. California will be able to ban it as well. And I think that, uh, candidly, the Department of Interior have uh, opened themselves up for uh, a legal issue because if they're granted one on issues of tourism, then they're going to have to grant all. So. I don't think that Donald Trump is going to do California any favors. Candidly, I think that there is a target on our back here in California. Uh, that said, we have fought bigger fights before. We've won those fights, and we're going to win again against Donald Trump. Um, any uh, final questions that you may have? Uh, I want to say, again, thank you so much to the Sierra Club, to Oceana, and to all the volunteers who are organized today. And I think we need to give them a round of applause, please. Thank you so much. Uh, to all of the tribal nations who are here today from across the state, San Diego in the south, the Del Norte County in the north, let's give them a round of applause and say thank you. And I'll end it with this. It is now time to be able to go give Donald Trump hell. 
Uh, we are going to be delivering 1,500 letters over the past two weeks from residents who are opposed to offshore oil drilling. We'll also be delivering the resolution from the state Senate, bipartisan. Republicans and Democrats are opposing offshore oil drilling here in California. Let's go give them hell. Thank you so much, everybody.